in the previous video, I introduced the notion of two polluting firms and showed that if we have these two polluting firms that are diagrammed on the left, then you could regulate them by imposing this standard of S2, or you could regulate them by imposing this tax on non-abatement. And with that particular standard and that particular, or that particular tax, the amount of abatement that you got is exactly the same. So I chose the level of S2 and the level of the tax so that the environment is equally polluted or equally clean, regardless of whether the government uses the standard of the tax. The question then becomes whether there's any reason for society to prefer a standard or a tax, given that both of them keep the environment equally well protected. The answer is going to be that there is a reason to prefer one over the other, even though they're completely equal in terms of their environmental effect, because one of them generates lower abatement costs than the other. The purpose of this video is to prove that. So using the left-hand diagram, which I have, to which I've added some labeled points, A, B, C, X, and Y, and on the lower left, the origin O, I'm going to show that the total abatement cost, which means the abatement cost for firm 1 and firm 3, taken together are not the same when you have a standard than when you have a tax. And we'll talk about which one is bigger. And the one that generates the bigger total abatement cost is the one you want to avoid. So the first question is, how do you get total abatement cost from this left-hand diagram, which doesn't show total abatement cost, it only shows marginal abatement cost? For that, you have to remember a basic principle that we discussed a long time ago, which is that if you have a graph of a marginal, you can get the total by calculating the area under the marginal curve. So in this case, you can get the total abatement cost by calculating the area under the marginal abatement cost curve. So the area under MAC curves are going to be total abatement costs, and total abatement costs are what we want to calculate. So here we calculate total abatement costs. And let's do this in a systematic way. First, I want to explain this, which says under the standard that one component of the total abatement cost is OAS2. This is OAS2. This is the total abatement cost for firm one under the standard. And the reason is that under the standard, firm one, of course, goes to S2, because that's what it's legally required to do. Its MAC is at A. The area under the MAC curve is the area under OA. And the area under OA is the triangle OAS2 which is exactly what we were trying to explain. So that shows why the, the first term here, OAS2, represents for firm 1, it's firm 1, the total abatement cost under the standard. Do some erasing. And next, I want to explain this entry OCS2. And that's going to be for firm three. So my claim is that that's going to be. The standard, the, the standards total abatement cost for firm three. So let's see why. 
under the standard, firm 3, the standard is S2, so firm 3 goes to point C, because firm 3 has MAC3. So its marginal abatement cost is located at point C. Its total abatement cost is the area under the marginal abatement cost. So it's the area under OC, so it's OCS2. And sure enough, OCS2 is what I was trying to explain. So that is the total abatement cost, TAC, under the standard for firm 3. And remember, for firm 1, the total abatement cost was, the, was OAS2. That was, that was that triangle. So let's do some erasing. I'll rewrite firm three because I want to keep that. Next, I want to explain this OXS1. So this is now under the tax for firm one. Under the tax, For firm one, the firm goes to point X. So the question is going to be, if you're at point X, what's your total abatement cost? Well, you, your marginal abatement cost is MAC1 at point X. Your total abatement cost is the area under the MAC curve. So it's the area under OX, which is OXS1. That explains OX as 1 as being the, the total abatement cost for from 1 under the tax. Now let's explain from 3 under the tax. From 3 under the tax, so here's the tax. From 3 goes to point Y under the tax. As uh, as explained in this diagram, which we did several videos before. So we're at point Y, and we want to answer the question, what is the total abatement cost at point Y? Well, it's the area under the marginal abatement cost. The area under the marginal abatement cost is OYS3. And that explains OYS3 as being the total abatement cost under the tax. All right, I want to pause for a minute. Now I want to find out whether total abatement cost is bigger under the standard or under the tax. So the next thing is to form the difference algebraically or geometry or geometrically between the standard and the tax. I'm going to take the standard minus the tax. I'm going to calculate that and see whether it's positive or negative, and that'll tell me which one is bigger. It turns out the easiest way to do that subtraction is first to look at firm 1, and then to look at firm 3. So for firm 1, I want to take the standard's total abatement cost minus the tax's total abatement cost. You can see the area that I circled in red. Firm 1's standard total abatement cost is OAS2. Which is the area under OA. And firm 1's Total abatement cost under the tax is OXS1, which is the area under OX. If you look on the left, clearly the difference between those is the difference between the area under OA and the area under OX, which is the area under XA. I can call it XA. S2, S1. 
and that is what I've called it right here x a s 2 s 1 so that explains how you get this first term let me pause to do a little bit of erasing and now I want to get this other term so I'm going to work on from, from 3 under the standard from 3's total abatement cost are OCS2 so under the standard from 3's total abatement cost or OCS2 because under the standard it goes to S2 its marginal abatement cost goes to, means it's at point C so it's the area under OC under the tax its total abatement cost is the area under OY that's here OY S3 O now I want to subtract that. In other words, I want to subtract here. Let me uh, get the colors to match up. I want to subtract the yellow triangle from the turquoise triangle. Now, the yellow triangle, OCS2, is smaller than the turquoise triangle, OIS3. So when I take OCS2 minus OIS3, I'm taking something smaller minus something bigger, so I'm getting get something negative. And that's the reason here why I have a negative sign. That's important. Okay, now how about the difference between the two triangles? Well, clearly the difference between the triangle that's under OI and the triangle that's under OC is the I guess it's a trapezoid under CY. So the difference is CY S3 S2, which is exactly what I wrote here. CY S3 S2. So that explains that explains that. Let me do some erasing. So I've gotten to this point. And what I want to figure out is whether that's positive or negative. Do some more erasing. So uh, looking back again at uh, at this, when is x a s two s one, which is the area under x a. The other is c y s three s two, which is the area under c y. So I'm taking the area under x a minus the area under c y. It's obvious from the graph on the left that's going to be positive because the area under XA is way bigger than the area under CY. What I do on the next line is prove that geometrically. Let me talk through it first using the graph on the left. Start with the area under XA. My first claim is going to be that the area under XA is bigger than the area under XB. So area here, area under XB. Uh, and that's obvious because the area under XA, I mean, XA is a lot higher than B. My next claim is that the area under XB is equal to the area under BY, this area here, because the length of XB is equal to the length of BY. And that's just because, as you'll recall, 
the distance from S1 to S2 is the same as the distance from S2 to S3. So again, let me review where we've got. It started from the area under XA, bigger than the area under XB, equal to the area under BY. And finally, the area under BY is clearly bigger than the area under CY because C is less than B. So that's what the math says. The area under XA, which is XA, S2, S1, is greater than the area under XB, which is XB, S2, S1. That is equal to the area under BY, which is BY, S3, S2, which is greater than the area under CY, which is CY, S3, S2. What that gets me is that the area under XA is larger than something which is equal to something which is larger than the area under CY. And so the area under XA is bigger than the area under CY. And after all, that's what I wanted to show in the first place. I wanted to show that the area under XA is bigger than the area under CY. Because that tells me that this is greater than zero. The area under XA is bigger than the area under CY, so if you take the area under XA minus the area under CY, you get something that's bigger than zero. Okay, let me clean this up a little bit. So therefore, the standard total abatement cost minus the tax total abatement cost, which is, uh, which is this here, is equal to something which is greater than zero. So that's greater than zero. And therefore, the total abatement cost under the tax is, that is a tax's total abatement cost, is less than the standard's total abatement cost. Or put the other way, the standard's total abatement cost is bigger. S that's a long analysis. But what it shows is that the abatement costs aren't the same. If you impose a standard, you're going to generate higher abatement costs for society as a whole than if you impose a tax for the same amount of environmental protection. And since the amount of environmental protection is the same, society will prefer the choice that has the lower abatement cost, and that is the tax. Tax has a lower abatement cost. So finally, let's think through why this is true. Why does the tax have a lower bait cost? I'm going to do a little bit of erasing. Let me try to erase this. I, oh, yeah, I usually can't. Oops. Um, sorry about that. All right, so why the um, the tax generates lower abatement cost than the standard? Under the standard, both firms have to go to S2. So one of them goes to A, one of them goes to C. They have very different abatement costs because they have very different marginal abatement costs. So What's important here in this example is not just that you have two firms, that you have two very different firms. They're very different in their abatement cost. Firm three has a really low MAC curve, so it finds abatement quite cheap. Firm one has a really high MAC curve. It finds abatement really expensive. Under the standard, you're forcing both of them to do exactly the same thing, to go to S2, regardless of the fact that one of them finds it extremely expensive to do that, and the other finds it really cheap to do that. Under the tax, under the tax here, they can, they don't have to do the same thing. They have to pay the same tax, but they don't have to engage in the same level of abatement. The firm that finds abatement really expensive, which is firm one, it doesn't have to abate much. It can just go to point X. 
And the firm that finds abatement really cheap is going to end up abating a lot, going all the way to Y. Allowing the firm's flexibility in how much abatement they undertake is a property of the tax system, and it's not a property of the standard system. Allowing that flexibility means that the firm that finds abatement expensive doesn't do much of it, and the firm that finds abatement cheap does a lot of it. Thinking about it that way, it's rather intuitive that, you, that society as a whole saves on abatement costs if it uses a tax. You let the firm that does abatement cheapest do more of it. It's, it's really just as simple as that. And so that's the intuition for why it's better for society to use the tax than to use the standard if the tax and the standard have been designed to give an equal amount of environmental protection. When you have firms that are diverse, that have different marginal abatement costs, because the tax allows them to behave in a diverse way in response to their diverse circumstances. Whereas the standard says, I don't care what your circumstances are, everybody has to do exactly the same thing. Okay. So that's the intuition for the, for the result of this video, which is that the economic incentive instrument, namely the tax, is superior to the command and control instrument, namely the standard, when you've calibrated the tax and the standard to achieve equal amounts of environmental protection.